photography is something very powerful. It's a language that's not too long. It started just 100, 150 years ago. It's a powerful to finish with all this intervention that we are doing now in photography. We are modifying the photography. But uh, for the ones that were photographers, a huge privilege. Be capable in this fraction of a second. Bring the past and the reality that is in front of you. It's a matter of instinct. Photographer is a hunter. You have or you don't have. You feel the picture or not. You can have some luck. But uh, uh, it's much more uh, instinctive presence inside the movement that happens in front of you. This was my first picture, the first picture that I made in all my life long. And uh, we just bought one photograph coming for her. We put the first film. My wife was sitting in the window. We were in a very nice small village in Haute Savoie in France. I think that's not too bad. The composition is quite equilibrated. I have, uh, as always in my photographies, my central spot, all of my pictures. Basically, the spot is central. And uh, I have all the ponderation of the weight left, right. What she has in front of her is the free space. What she has in the back is a space to sustain the, the back of the body. In the end, uh, photography is very instinctive. The composition, that everything is there. It's a finished product, a 99% when you press the button. I was doing a story, I did a book called Walkers, and that was the first story that I did for the Walkers book that took me about five, six years of photography to do this. It's a gold mine in my country, in Brazil, and uh, we had here in this huge hall about twice the size of a, a soccer stadium. I had about uh, 50,000 people walking inside with no mechanical instrument, nothing, on doing by hand. For me, it was something very special. I spent here about one month with them, and many times I climbed these stairs with uh, hundreds of guys with these bags carrying the up. Here for me, I climbed before this man, I turned, I had one before me, because you climb very tight here inside. I turned and I made this picture, on one, this one. And for me, it's, it's there. The story is materialized there. I believe that this is the difference with photography. Cinema is a full story. Cinema is intellectual image. Cinema, we have a, a concept to work on it. We have sound, we have uh, noise, we have uh, a movement. Photography, no. It's just a cross-section of reality. Must be there instinctively. You have or you don't have. You see, I had a big show that was presented now called Genesis, where I have about 250 pictures in this show. If I take an average one two hundred fifth of a second for each one, when you multiply for two hundred fifth, all together that made one second of pictures. If I made the addition of this, but in this fraction of second that you freeze the image like this, I have my history there. I have my father. I have my mother. I have my origins there. I have my lights. All this is inside me. My ideology. And I have all the history that's happening in front of me. I was waiting this leopard. Uh, we were working north of Namibia. The guy that, that was with me after one and a half, two months, said, Sebastian, I'm sure that you have a leopard that come to drink here. We arrived early. We set the car in a point where we're not too much visible. We had one of these flashlights that you see the animals in the night. And by 11, half past 11, even the leopard really came to drink. And uh, when he started to drink, the assistant switched on the spotlight and I made one picture, one shot. 
the frame was good. And the Leopard, don't run. He just turned and went out of the frame. And that was finished. One picture, and I had a big chance on it. It's, it's not the same problem of luck or not luck. It's that uh, he will be coming to drink. The problem is to see if you'll be coming 7 in the evening, 11 or 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. But always we'll be waiting there. That's the life of a photographer, to wait. I wait a lot. I like to wait. And it's a huge opportunity to, when you are waiting to live uh, your past life, to remember everything. Now, I, I live inside my head uh, enormous when I'm waiting in photography. And sometimes I wait also out of the photograph moment. Sometimes I lose a connection in you know, a small airport in uh, some part in the planet where I don't have a lot of uh, air traffic. I need to sit there and wait for 48 hours. Sometimes I plane again. And, uh, and that's the life of photographers to wait. It's a very special moment. We went inside the Weddell Sea in Antarctica. Weddell Sea for me had a lot of uh, means in my life because we had a huge adventure that happened inside this sea in, uh, in Antarctica. We toured in Antarctica for more than two months. It was the first time that was saw something in that shape. Very special, huge, huge. That was like 10, 15 big buildings. We turned around it. It was long turns because I suspect it was quite big. The boat was quite big also, but they did at least four or five turns here in two hours. And uh, I was waiting the light because we have uh, a very special sky. It was a scattered, completely scattered the sky. I had really a big chance, first, to find the iceberg and second, to have the perfect light. But yet, to have all the chances in your side, you must put them in your side. You must be there, you must insist, you must convince the people that are around you that you need to wait. Guys, hold this boat a little bit, at least two, three hours more, we take this picture and we turn around and to get the shot. I have two books come out now, one uh, in March. We are editing my first uh, photographic book called Other Americas. We have a new edition come out in many different towns around the world. And I have another board of work, these pictures that are back to me, that I work after 2002, is a board of work about coffee, coffee plantation, coffee workers around the world. You see, coffee for me is very important. I'm a Brazilian. My father, who when first came to my region in Brazil, he had a, a group of mules and he carried coffee. About 15 days traveling with coffee with these mules, bring to the railroad that crossed my, where I born in my town. That was about 1930-32 and they were carrying coffee. When I was a child, my father had his own mill working in coffee, preparing coffee for exportation. And for many, many, many years, I was with my father in the trucks of my father, going inside uh, my region, collect bags of coffee, bring Ed in, in his mill, preparing the coffee for exportation. And uh, later, I became an economist. I work as an economist in international coffee organization. That means coffee. I do not drink coffee, but coffee is inside myself and I take a decision to do a story about coffee.